Hey everybody, I'm back. <laughs> How's it going, y'all? Rob Tomlinson, Dishnet34 here, welcoming you to today's episode of This Week in Perfect Team, episode number 209. Welcome in, welcome in. It's been a while. It's been a couple of weeks since I last saw you. How y'all been? Hopefully, you know, doing pretty good. Hanging in there. All that good stuff. Still enjoying the game, I hope. Oh, man. It has been... It was... My, my vacation was one heck of a week. Oh, my goodness gracious. You know, getting to visit Singapore to do to do what I did was absolutely incredible. And if you have not caught the uh if you have not caught the um YouTube video of it, it's on the Olympics channel right now. It is one of the most watched videos from the whole entire Olympic esports series. I know shameless plug on another stream whatever. <laughs> Oh man, but we had some fun times. There was a lot of ball go far as well. So I, I had a fun time. It was great. It was a great team effort by everyone involved. And then I had an unintended um, day in Amsterdam on Monday that kind of threw a whole wrench into each and every one of my plans for returning home. So that was fun as well. But man, oh man, it is great to be back. It is great to be home. Great to be back doing this week in Perfect Team. And we have some fun cards for y'all today. Oh, man. <laughs> really? Really? HR has some questions about your Amsterdam incident? Okay, I'll, I'll, need, to, I'll need to contact y'all at the end of the stream. <laughs> Trust me, nothing happened in Amsterdam other than a really good canal tour. All right. Let, let me tell you, that those canals in Amsterdam, they are damn pretty. All right. You know, it was kind of a calm, relaxing day on the water. You know, it was pretty, it was pretty darn cool. Pretty darn cool. All right, folks, let's get to the, let's get to the good stuff here. Let's get to the good stuff here. And you know what? We're going to start with a little bit of news, folks. Because I am, oh man, I am excited to announce that at 1 p.m. Eastern today, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the dot, OOTP 24 is going to be on sale, folks. 50% off for two weeks only beginning at 1 p.m. today. Oh, man. It is sale time, folks. Oh, man. Always a fun time when we can announce the first sale of the cycle. And, you know, it's almost... All-Star Game time as well, so, you know, it kind of coincides with it already. That's pretty darn cool right there. And along with that 50% off sale for Out of the Park Baseball 24, starting right now, starting right now, there is a perfect point sale Going on right now, you can save up to 30% off on perfect points as well. Plus, we're going to have a rotation of special packs throughout the week. So this perfect point sale is going to last at the end, until the end of next week's This Week in Perfect Team. Oh man. Oh man. So the so the 50% off sale for Out of the Park 24 goes for 2 weeks, I do believe, and then the 50% and then the perfect point sale will go for a week 
Plus, you know, it'll end after next week's This Week in Perfect Team. Fun stuff right there. Alrighty. Some other news and notes to announce as well. Um, because, you know, we've been getting some questions about the live update coming up. We are here to let you know that due to the Independence Day holiday next week, the live card update is going to be moved to Monday, July 10th. Monday, July 10th is going to be when the next live update happens. So a little bit of a news and note for you right there to keep you in the loop on that. Monday, July 10th, the next live update. But, you know, the biggest, you know, the I think, you know, the second biggest news and note that we need to go over, other than, you know, sales going up right now, is that next week, next Saturday, is Perfect Team Championship Series number three. That's right, the third PTCS will occur on Saturday, July 8th, beginning at noon Eastern time with finals coverage on the Out of the Park Developments Twitch channel. And yes, it's go I don't have anything else going on on Saturday, July 8th this time, so we're going to be able to watch stuff live, folks. So that's going to be... That's going to be fun. Now, again, the top 128 teams from the last four cumulative weeks in each of the 10 eligible formats will be participating in the PTCS. Players are going to get points based on how they finish in PTCS and the top 64 teams in the first five PTCSs will go to the perfect team master series. So that's pretty darn cool right there. And of course, there are going to be separate PTMSs for regular tourneys and for perfect drafts like always. And then, obviously, first place through 32nd place in each PTCS will get a brand new PTCS exclusive card depending on how they finish. We'll talk about those in just a little bit, but let's go ahead and talk about some of the formats that are going to be happening for PTCS number three. Let's go to the list right now. We got the full list right away for you. Here we go. So, a note that all formats will have a 1985 run environment with ADH. And, well, we're going to be going to the defensive era to live eras for the PTCSs this time around. Iron is going to be an Iron Defensive Era to Live Open. Bronze is going to be a Bronze Defensive Era to Live with a 1451 cap. The Silver is going to be a Silver Defensive Era to Live, 1551 cap. The Gold Tournament for PTCS number 3 is going to be a Gold Defensive Era to Live, 1851 cap. Diamond is going to be a Diamond Defensive Era to Live, 1951 cap. The Open is going to be, well, an Open Defensive Era to Live with a 2051 cap. The Wild Card is going to be a High Gold Floor Defensive Era to Live 2351 cap. The Weekly Tournament's going to be a non-live Defensive Era to Live Open. So, that's pretty interesting right there. The PD Daily Tournament's is going to be a defensive era to live perfect draft. And then for the PD Weekly, it's going to be a double perfect draft with that format as well. Now, the defensive era to live um, was kind of chosen a little bit randomly, but also a little bit of a backstory behind that because, because in a marathon game back in 1985, a 1985 the Braves and the Mets endured two rain delays in six hours and 10 minutes of playing time to beat the Braves 16 to 13 in 19 innings back in 1985. Pretty interesting stuff right there. 
And then that game, relief pitcher Rick Camp, an 060 career hitter, homered in the 18th inning to tie the game with Keith Hernandez hitting for the cycle in a game that ended at 3.55 a.m. on July 5th, the latest finish in Major League history. So some pretty fun stuff right there. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the prizes for this perfect team championship series. And yes, that was the infamous fireworks game. People, people were a little upset that there were fireworks going off at 4 a.m. in New York City <laughs> after that marathon of a game. Goodness gracious. So let's talk about the rewards for Perfect Team Championship Series number three. And we start off with the 17th through 32nd place reward. And we go back to 1900 for our first reward card. And it is 81 overall left fielder Jesse Burkett from the St. Louis Cardinals. Corner outfield card here. 99 Babbitt, 55 power, 57 avoid K, 94 contact, 84 gap, and 92 on the eye. A little bit better against righties than he is against lefties with a 101 Babbitt, 57 power, 58 avoid K, 97 contact, 86 gap, and 93 on the eye. 69 speed, 73 stealing, 77 on the base running, 66 on the sack bunt, 69 on the bunt for hit. Pretty nice right there. And a pretty solid defender in the corner outfield. 76 range, 75 error, 78 on the arm. He can play left field. He is also qualified to learn right field as well. In that 1900 season, he hit 363, 429, 474 with 7 homers, 68 RBI, and a 151 OPS+. Plus. He finished second to Cy Young on the team in wins above replacement. That's right. You know, Cy Young was on that 1900 St. Louis Cardinals team. I did not know that. <laughs> I did not know that Cy Young was on the St. Louis Cardinals in the 1900 season. That's, that's intriguing right there. But he finished second to Cy Young on the team in wins above replacement with 5.3 wins above replacement. Led the team in home runs and even led them in triples with 15 of them. So that's why you got a little bit of gap power on this card. And this season was also the eighth of nine straight seasons that Jesse Burkett had with a 410 plus on base percentage. So that is pretty darn, that's a pretty darn consistent track record right there. My goodness. So there you go. Jesse Burkett, your 17th through 32nd place reward next up we go to the high gold ranks for our ninth through 16th place reward and it is from the 1948 philadelphia phillies right-handed starter 88 overall schoolboy row 50 stuff 111 movement 109 homer rating 70 on the pitcher babbitt and 99 on the control some interesting splits here on this righty here a little bit better against lefties in some categories than he is against righties. He's got 52 stuff against lefties, 116 movement, 114 homer rating, 72 pitcher babbit, and 91 control. Compare that to his splits against righties, he's got 49 stuff, 106 movement, 104 homer rating, 68 pitcher babbit, but you're going to get a little bit more control out of him against right-handed batters at a 106 got fastball, curveball, screwball, changeup, and knuckle curve combo. 72 stamina and 81 on the hold runners. Now, this is kind of a later career schoolboy row. I believe this is his uh, next to last season in the big leagues. Finished 10 and 10 with a 407 ERA with 2.8 strikeouts per nine, 1.9 walks per nine. And this was his final season with 10 or more wins at the age of 38 that year and during the season you know he was mentoring a lot of those young Phillies players I believe this was a season where Richie Ashburn was on the roster I believe this was maybe an early Robin Roberts season as well he was recognized as a bit of a mentor in that Phillies clubhouse prior to those 1950 seasons where the Phillies were really really good and this was also the fourth lowest homer percentage and walk percentage 
of his career. So, you know, even, even though he was an old guy, he was still doing pretty well on the pitcher's mound during this season. So, 1948 Schoolboy Row from the Phillies is the 9th through 16th place reward in PTCS number 3. All right, let's get to some low diamond card for the 5th through 8th place reward in PTCS number 3. And we go back to before the 1900s for this one is a perfect team fan favorite. Ladies and gentlemen, 94 overall catcher, King Kelly. King Kelly, your 5th through 8th place reward for this PTCS 84 BABIP, 79 power, 73 avoid K, 97 contact, 94 gap power, and 68 on the eye. A little bit better against lefties than he is against righties. Against lefties, he has 87 BABIP, 81 power, 78 avoid K, 102 contact, 99 gap power, and 73 on the eye. Little bit interesting against righties as well. He's got 83 BABIP, 79 power, 71 avoid K, 95 contact, 92 gap, and 67 I. So pretty serviceable against righties as well. He can play both catcher and right field for this one. 57 ability, 86 arm uh, uh, behind the plate. Pretty good stuff right there, especially with the arm. Uh, in the outfield, he's got 52 range, 58 error, and 90 on arm so pretty pretty good arm out there in right field maybe not exactly the rangiest guy out there either um speed stealing and base running you know this is the king kelly card so you're going to get some speed from the catcher position out of this one 93 speed 98 stealing 89 on the base running uh, he's also got 58 on the sack but 51 on the bunt for hit He's actually He actually grades out a little bit better in right field than he does at catcher by just one point. So interesting stuff right there. 1888 season for King Kelly was a solid one for the guy. 318, 368, 480 on the slash line with nine homers, 82 RBI, and a 165 OPS+. Plus. This was his second season with Boston after being purchased from the from Chicago and became the $10,000 man, which is a pretty darn big deal back in those days. King Kelly led the team in stolen bases that year with 56. He also led the team in average on base and slugging. This guy was a superstar back in those 1880s teams. Um, his wins above replacement at four and a half and his offensive wins above replacement at five and a half were both the third highest in his career during this season. So pretty good stuff for King Kelly. And he is the 5th through 8th place reward for PTCS number 3. All right, next up, let's get to some let's get to some re more rewards here. We go to the high diamond rank for our 3rd and 4th place reward for PTCS number 3. We go to the pitcher's mound and we go to the 1980s, well, specifically 1980 for this next card. Ladies and gentlemen, your third and fourth place reward for PTCS number three is 98 overall left-handed starter from the LA Dodgers. It is Jerry Royce. Jerry Royce, 61 stuff, 106 movement, 98 homer rating, 95 pitcher BABIP, and 93 on the control. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Some interesting splits here for Jerry Royce. 61 stuff against lefties, 123 movement, 103 homer rating, 94 pitcher BABIP, and 81 control. Against righties. A little bit more balanced on this one. 61 stuff, 101 movement, 95 homer rating, a little bit more pitcher BABIP at 95, and 96 on the control. 87 stamina and 73 on the hold runners. Fastball, curveball, changeup, sinker, cutter combo on this guy. Now, Jerry Royce, always always some interesting cards in Perfect Team. All Every single year, there is some interesting cards for Jerry Royce. This is no different. 
1980 season for Jerry Royce, one of the better ones of his career, if not the best season of his career. Went 18 and 6 with a 2.51 ERA, 4.4 strikeouts per nine, and 1.6 walks per nine. Finished second in the NL Cy Young voting. Was an All Star that year. Finished 20th in NL MVP as well. So he got some votes for MVP as well. This is a t this was a tie for a career high in wins for Jerry Royce with 18, tying him with his. Oh boy, I need to look at that again. Which other season did he have? 19. Did he have 18 wins in? He had it in 1975 with Pittsburgh. Okay. Yep, he went 18-11 in 1975 with Pittsburgh. That was his only other season where he had 18 wins. Um, he led the MLB in shutouts as well during the 1980 season with a whopping six of them. Six of them in 10 complete games. This guy was a complete game machine with the Dodgers. In his, in his career with the Dodgers, he had... He had... 16 shutouts with the Dodgers. That is outstanding right there. Plus, during the 1980 season, he threw a no-hitter on June 27th, 1980. Would have been a perfect game if not for a first-inning throwing error by Bill Russell. Oof. Would have been a perfect game if not for that doggone error right there. But there you go. Jerry Royce, your third and fourth place reward for PTCS number three. All right. Your second place reward if you make it to the finals but just miss out on getting that champion card. You're not going home empty-handed because your second place reward is 100 overall third baseman. From the 1987 Boston Red Sox, it is Wade Boggs. Wade Boggs, 101 Babbitt, 77 power, 95 avoid K, 118 contacts, 100 gap power, and 98 I. Look at the splits against righties here, folks. 105 Babbitt, 79 power, 96 avoid K. 123 contacts, 101 gap power, and 101i. He's not bad against lefties as well. Maybe not as good as he is against righties, but still 90 Babbitt, 70 power, 92 avoid K, 105 contact, 94 gap, and 90 on the I. Holy moly. Plus, he's actually pretty good on, on defense as well over at third base. 89 range, 92 error, 91 arm, and 90 on the turn double play. 38 speed, 10 stealing, and 52 on the base running. So not the best base runner in the world. 1987 season, one of the best years of Wade Boggs' career. Hit 363, 461 with a 588 slugging percentage. He ran into 24 homers during that year, which is just incredible given Wade Boggs' overall line of work. 89 RBI on the year, 174 on the OPS Plus. Finished ninth in AL MVP voting in 1987. He was an all-star. He was also a silver slugger during that year. 24 homers, obviously a career high. One of only two seasons in which he hit double-digit home runs. And this was also his third straight AL batting title that year with that 363 average, the fourth that he had in a span of five years. Which, that is just absolutely incredible. So there you go. Wade Boggs from the 1987 Boston Red Sox is your second-place reward in PTCS number three. Alrighty, guys. So your first place reward. Now, if you go back, if we go back a little bit in the slides, which is what I'm going to do right here, you notice that there are a couple of numbers at the back end of those caps. Now, 
the number 51, you know, has been used by quite a few players. You know, we had Randy Johnson, you know, as the last PTCS reward, which was a 51. But, you know, there's another famous number 51 that we have had in the big leagues. That's, you know, pretty darn good. And could make for a very, very good PTCS reward card. Ladies and gentlemen, the number 51 we are talking about today comes to us from the 2004 Seattle Mariners. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Ichiro Suzuki. 100 overall, your PTCS3 champion reward. 120 BABIP, 42 power, 111 avoid K, 133 contact. 95 gap and 65 I. Who, buddy? Look at the batting splits here. He's going to be pretty good against both lefties and righties. He has some pop against lefties. 124 Babbitt, 67 power, 108 avoid K, 142 contact, 89 gap, and 67 I. Against righties. 119 Babbitt, 33 power, 111 avoid K, 131 contact, 97 gap, and 64 on I. 97 speed, 101 stealing, 122 on the base running as well. Some absolutely insane bunting ratings, 106 sack bunt, 104 on the bunt for hit. But what really, but what really stands out to me is his defensive ratings. Look here. At those defensive ratings, folks. Oh my goodness. That is 106 range, 106 error, and 119 arm. My, oh my. He can play right field 100%. He can train up in center field as well. This card is insane. And you know what? For as insane a season as he had in 2004, it only makes sense. 372 average, 414 on base, 455 slugging percentage with 8 homers, 60 RBI, and a 130 OPS plus finish 7th an AL MVP in the 04 season, got an all-star nod, won a gold glove as well. He broke George Sisler's single season hits record with 262 hits during the regular season. Oh man, which was just insane to think about during that time for, for what was, you know, a kind of mediocre Mariners team as it was. But Ichiro carried the team on his back that year. Career highs and OPS hits, obviously, at bats. Wins above replacement at 9.2. And this was also a career high in defensive wins above replacement for Ichiro with a two and a half. Holy cow. So Ichiro Suzuki, your PTCS number three champion reward and insane Ichiro right here folks my oh my whoo some solid rewards this time around if you ask me all right before we get into the contact before we get into the content the main content for today you know we gotta do it to him you know because this is the final time that I get to do this on stream. And that is talk about Stathead Baseball powered by Baseball Reference. Guys, if you have not taken advantage of this offer yet, 
$25 off an annual baseball or all sports subscription with code 23OOTP25. It is a fantastic service. If you have not taken advantage of it, do so now, folks. Do so now. And you know what? It's not just for baseball. It's for football. It's for basketball. It's for hockey. And, you know, it is absolutely incredible what Stat Head Baseball can do for you. You can you can put in as many filters as you want. It'll it'll spit out some absolutely incredible stats for you. So this offer expired. Hang on, hang on a minute. What what's that now? Oh, I see. Hmm. All right, I will let them know. Well, guys, we have just gotten word. We have just gotten word, my friends, that this offer for Stat Head Baseball has been extended until the end of 2023, folks. That's right. This offer does not expire on July 1st anymore. It expires on December 31st. 2023 so you have some more time to take advantage of this $25 off code so you know you all have no excuses now to take advantage of this $25 off an annual baseball or all sports subscription ends now on December 31st 2023 take advantage of this today all right, folks, let's get to the big content of the day. It is our third set of Topps Dream Bracket cards. Oh, man, there are, some, there are some very fun cards here in this set that I cannot wait to show off to y'all. So let's go ahead and get things started. Let's go ahead and get things started with our first card of the day. And you know what? We're going to go. We're going to go back a little bit. We're going to go back a little bit today. And we're starting off today with 72 overall from the 1983 Houston Astros. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Nolan Ryan. A, low, a silver Nolan Ryan card, folks. This is an interesting one right here. 108 stuff, 99 movement, 93 homer rating, 86 pitcher Babip, and just 32 on the control. And look at that picture right there. <laughs> that is a hot photo right there. 110 stuff against lefties. 101 movement, 96 homer, 87 pitcher Babbitt, and 33 control. You're getting, you are getting some reverse splits with this Nolan Ryan card here, folks. Woo! That is going to make this a solid silver card here, folks. 107 stuff against righties, 98 movement against righties, 91 homer rating, 85 pitcher Babbitt, 32 on the control and some people are saying this is too much control i say it's just right <laughs> he's got 83 stamina 52 on the hold runners fastball curveball circle change combinations uh 1983 season a solid one for nolan ryan 14 and 9 with a 298 era 8.4 strikeouts per nine 4.6 walks per nine and a 114 ERA plus for what was eh, a decent-ish Houston team, finishing third in the NL West that year, 85 and 77 record. You know, one of it was, it was a good season for Nolan Ryan. No, he struck out 183 guys and 196 and a third. Actually, led the lead, led the MLB in hits per nine that year at six point one so some so this could be a fun card right here for a lot of people uh finished ninth in nl cy young voting 2.1 wins above replacement was sixth on the team and and something that i found interesting 
with, with Nolan Ryan when I was looking through his stats. So on baseball reference, on the individual player page for Nolan Ryan, it lists his wins above replacement at 2.6. Okay, so that's fine. But if you go to the page for the 1983 Houston Astros as a team and you scroll down to, you know, wins over replacement there, they have Nolan Ryan listed at 2.1 wins above replacement. So that I found pretty darn confusing. I don't know why it's not 2.6 or 2.1 on both pages, which is like, eh? Like, like, like what, what's going on over there at, at baseball reference? But maybe, maybe that's just something to, maybe that's just something to, uh, <laughs> Um, let them know. <laughs> Either way, during this 1983 season for Nolan Ryan, he actually broke Walter Johnson's career strikeout record on April 27th of that year, 1983. So this is a fun silver card here for Nolan Ryan. He is in perfect team 24. All right, next up, let's go to a bit of a more modern player here for our next card and we go to 2012 you know 2012 pretty good year for a lot of people and it was also a pretty good year for one um number one um let's say 84 overall first baseman from the cincinnati reds joey vato 84 overall joey vato your next Tops Dream Bracket card here. 90 Babip, 65 Power, 74 Void K, 97 Contact, 101 Gap, and 120 on the eye. Now look at these splits against Rite Aid's Vado, a very splitty guy here. 94 Babip, 67 Power, 81 Avoid K, 103 Contact, 106 Gap, and 125 on the eye. So this guy, you know, solid against right-handed pitching. Against lefties, a little bit on the mess side, but, you know, it's fine. Oh, man. 47 range on the infield, 55 error, 47 arm, and 40 turn double play. 32 speed, 26 stealing, 55 base running. Overall, this was a solid year for Joey Votto. Hit 337, 474, 567 with 14 homers, 56 RBI, and a 177 OPS plus in 111 games. Had missed a little bit of time with injury during the year, but he still managed to put together a darn good season. He was an all-star, finished 14th in NL MVP voting. He led MLB in on-base percentage at 474. He also led in intentional walks with 18 of them, and he led the National League in walks with 94 of them. He also managed to get a career high in doubles with 44 that year, despite only playing 111 games. My, oh my. Um, and that 111 games, fewest that he played since the 2009 season, I do believe when he had 131 games during that year. 2008 was actually 151 games for him, so I don't know why I put 2008 down there, but meh. <laughs> but he still put together a solid, solid campaign for the Cincinnati Reds that year. I do want to do, though, uh, take a look at his batting splits here, just to kind of show you why we have the splits the way they are. So against righties, Against righties, these numbers are absolutely insane. 359 batting average, 500 on base percentage. So every so half the time he faced a righty, this guy got on base. Absolutely incredible. 609 slugging percentage as well. 10 homers, 41 RBI, drew 71 walks against righties. And against lefties, though, he hit just 288 with a 413 on base percentage and a 475 slugging percentage. So an 887 OPS against lefties, 
compared to an 1109 OPS against righties. He actually struck out more than he walked against left-handed pitching, which honestly kind of fascinated me a little bit when I was looking up these stats. So there you go. Joey Votto. Very interesting gold card right here. Could probably be a good v right option in some gold tourneys here. He is in Perfect Team 24. Alrighty, next up. Next up, we got one more gold card to show off for you in our Tops Dream Bracket number three set right here. And we go to a guy who somehow, someway, is a Hall of Famer. Despite what a lot of people think, he is a Hall of Famer. 87 overall from the Chicago White Sox, peak Harold Baines. Harold Baines, 74 BABIP, 86 power, 77 avoid K, 93 contact, 81 gap power, and 84 eye. A little bit better against righties than he is against lefties. 74 BABIP, 88 power, 81 avoid K, 95 contact, 82 gap, and 85 on I. Against lefties, it's a little bit on the mess side. There's still a little green there, though. 74 BABIP, 80 power, 65 avoid K, 86 contact, 78 gap power, and 81 on the I. Uh, 19 speed, 50 stealing, 57 base running. Kind of meh on defense. 58 range, 59 error, 84 on the outfield arm. He is a professional hitter. That's that's a good thing to say about Harold Baines. You know, he had a, a longer career than I think a lot of people thought he did. Uh, 21, 22 seasons in the big leagues from 1980 all the way up to 2001. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Hit 289, 356, 465 on his slash line, 380, 384 homers, 1,600. 128 RBI. He was a six-time All-Star, 1989 Silver Slugger as well. Had 11 seasons of 20 or more home runs, which is honestly not bad. Now, a fun story that I heard about Harold Banks is that he was traded to Texas in 1989 after being with the White Sox for, gosh, how many years was he with the White Sox? Quite a, quite a few years. Um, from 1980 to 1989 with the White Sox when they traded him to Texas in the middle of the season. The White Sox actually retired his number. They actually retired his number after they traded him to the Rangers. And every time, he, and when he came back to Chicago... Uh, for a couple of stints, 1996 and 1997, and also in 2000 and 2001, they unretired the number so that Harold Baines could have his number. Which, that is, that's, that's a bit hilarious, if you ask me. But like, you know, the White Sox are just being the White Sox, I guess, with this guy. <laughs> And maybe just a little sad that, that the White Sox have had such an unremarkable existence up to that point. Oh, to have to retire the number of a guy they traded midseason. That does, that's just incredible. That's just incredible to think about. So there you go. Harold Baines, 87 overall peak card from the Chicago White Sox is in. Perfect team, 24. All right, next up. Next up, let's go back to the 1980s. And you know, the 1980s, you know, they had some sick pictures back in the 1980s. This guy right here, you know, 1987 season, we've already talked a little bit about Wade Boggs' season in the American League back in that 1987 season. But the guy, but a guy who actually finished above him in the AL MVP vote is our next card in the set. Who finished fifth in the AL MVP vote during the 1987 season. It was 93 overall, Paul Molitor 
from the Milwaukee Brewers. A 97 BABIP, 67 power, 74 avoid K, 103 contacts, 100 gap power, and 82 on the eye. Against righties, he looks very solid. 102 BABIP, 70 power, 69 avoid K, 107 contact, 102 gap, and 80 on the eye. Against lefties, though, a little bit interesting and a little bit more balanced down the line. 81 BABIP, 57 power. 89 avoid K, 91 contact, 94 gap, and 89 I. 86 speed, 93 ceiling, 101 base running. So a bit of a sneaky, speedy Paul Molitor right here. He has 45 stolen bases during the season as well, which is something pretty cool. He can play first base. He can play second. He can play third as well. 74 range, 62 error, 86 arm, 71 on the turn double play maybe a little bit more of a third base type than he is maybe a first base or second base but he is fully trained at first second and third so in the 1987 season for paul molitor 353 438 566 on the slash line 16 homers 75 rbi and a 161 ops plus like we said finished fifth in the AL MVP vote, won the Silver Slugger that year for the Brewers. Had a career high in batting average, on base, slugging. Had 41 doubles on the air, career high. 45 stolen bases, a career high as well. Plus, during this season, you know, this may have factored in a little bit into why he was, you know, finished fifth in the AL MVP vote. The dude had a 39-game hit streak during the regular season which is the fifth longest in modern history. And uh, the fans were a little bit, uh, the fans were a little bit uh, uh, mad a little bit because he was on deck when the, when a game winning hit was scored and he was 0 4 on the day on game 40 of what, of that potential streak. So he had an 0 for day, 0 for day going and he was on deck with a chance to get a 40-game hit streak, but then the game ended. Wow. So there you go. Paul Molitor from the Milwaukee Brewers, 93 overall in Perfect Team 24. All right, next up, let's go back to the let's go back to the mid-2000s. Early mid-2000s, maybe a little bit early 2010s as well. And, you know, one of, one of the more underrated pitchers of this era that, you know, was an ace for his squad for quite a long time. Let's go 94 overall from the Houston Astros peak card right-handed pitcher Roy Oswalt. 77 stuff. 105 movement, 103 homer rating, 68 pitcher BABIP, and 107 on the control. A little bit better against righties than he is against lefties. 78 stuff, 108 movement, 105 homer rating, 69 pitcher BABIP, and 111 on the control. 88 stamina, 109 on the hold runners. Fastball, slider, curveball, and changeup combination. Decent sack bunt as well in case you're running into a no DH tournament. 93 on the sack bunt. Roy Oswald, you know, one of those pitchers that you knew was an ace, but, you know, didn't quite get enough attention from national media for how good he was. 2001 to 2013, Roy Oswald, 163 and 102. On his career record, a 336 ERA and a 127 ERA plus. So he was a pretty well above average throughout his entire career. He was a three-time All-Star, won the ERA title in 2006 with a 298 ERA. He was a back-to-back 20-game -back winner in 2004 and 2005. And he finished top six in the Cy Young vote six times never finishing higher than third than he did in 2000, 
2004 season, where he went 20 and 10 with a 3.49 ERA, 35 games started during that year. Had a couple of four, had a few fourth place finishes in Cy Young voting. Finished fifth in his rookie year in 2001, where he finished second in rookie of the year. Had a sixth place finish in 2010 between Houston and Philadelphia. So pretty cool stuff. Roy Oswalt, you know, only had one season before 2012 where he had an ERA above four. Only one season in which he had an ERA above four prior to the 2012 season. And that was in 2009 with Houston. So this guy was a model of consistent pitching. Didn't quite get the attention he deserved. Fell off the all fall off fell off the Hall of Fame bra bar, um, ballot, kind of deservedly. But you know this guy was very good in his peak for Houston between 01 and 2008. You know he was part of that dominant Phillies rotation in 2010. Oh man, to to end off that season, man, oh man. And he threw a no-hitter. That is right. He did throw a no-hitter in his career. Well, part of a combined no-no. That's true. But there you go. Roy Oswalt from the Houston Astros. Peak card. 94 overall. Is it? Perfect team. 24. All right. Next up, let's go to the last decade. Let's go to the last decade and we go to a guy that's still playing in the big leagues today. Still playing in the big leagues today. And uh, also made the final out of last night's perfect game. Or at least, you know, fielded the ball that was hit to end last night's perfect game. Ladies and gentlemen, from the 2015 Toronto Blue Jays, it is 97 overall third baseman. Josh Donaldson. Josh Donaldson, 63 BABIP, 97 power, 65 avoid K, 85 contact, 77 gap, and 105 on the eye. A little bit better against lefties than he is against righties. You got 60 BABIP against lefties, 100 power, 71 avoid K, 86 contact, 98 gap, and 111 on eye. Against righties, it's okay. 64 BABIP, 97 power, 63 avoid K, 85 contact, 70 gap, and 103i. Defensively, though, he is pretty darn good over at third base. 89 range, 64 error, 102 arm, and 84 on the turn double play. A 100 plus arm at third base, that is nothing to sneeze at. Now, this was Josh Donaldson during his Rainmaker days in Toronto when he was just absolutely unstoppable for quite a long time. 2015, his first year with the Toronto Blue Jays after he got famously traded from the Oakland A's. 297, 371, 568 on the slash line during this year. 41 homers, 123 RBI, and a 151 OPS plus right in the middle of that lineup with Encarnacion and Bautista and a lot of those other great power hitters on those 2015 Toronto Blue Jays. He was the 2015 AL MVP. He was an all-star and a silver slugger as well. He led MLB in runs scored that year as well with 122 runs scored, led the American League in RBI with the 123 mark. So pretty cool stuff for Josh Donaldson. Also, don't have this guy bunt. Four bunt, one on the bunt for hit. Yeah. Yeah. Because this guy just hits dingers. This guy just absolutely mashes dingers. And hopefully, he will be mashing dingers for your team as well if you get this card. Pretty cool stuff. And no, this was actually, you know, a really good stretch for Josh Donaldson. No, he had 41 homers in 2015, 37 of them in 2016, 33 of them in 2017. And then, you know, their injuries really derailed his career after that. Um, he had a resurgent year in Atlanta in 2019, decent year in Minnesota in 2021. But man, oh man, if he was healthy for quite a long time, 
Man, oh man, who knows what could have happened. So there you go. Josh Donaldson from the 2015 Toronto Blue Jays is in. Perfect team. 24. All right, next up, let's go to the beginning of this century. And let's go to one of the... I don't know if you want to call it one of the biggest upsets in World Series history, but, you know, it's up there. We go to the 2001 Arizona Diamondbacks for our next card of the day. And, ladies and gentlemen, it is 98 overall left fielder Luis Gonzalez. Luis Gonzalez, 64 BABIP, 105 power, 89 avoid K, 96 contact, 97 gap, and 103 I. Look at the splits against righties here, folks. 64 BABIP, 108 power, 92 avoid K, 98 contact, 99 gap, and 105 on I. Whoo! Solid numbers against righties right here against lefties eh, you probably don't want to play him too much against lefties 67 babbitt 95 power 78 avoid k 91 contact 91 gap and 96 on the eye defensively he can only play left field he's not terrible in left field 74 range 100 error 72 on the arm 31 speed, 25 stealing, 54 base running. So he's not going to steal you a lot of bases. He's a meh kind of base runner as well. 13 sack bunt and 9 on the bunt for hit. 2001 season for Luis Gonzalez, you know, pretty darn good if you ask me. Uh, 325, 429, 688 on the slugging percentage. 57 homers and 142 RBI. And ladies and gentlemen, those numbers did not even lead the league. Didn't even lead the National League in those categories. My God. 174 OPS plus during the year. Finished third in National League MVP. Was a silver slugger. Was an all-star. You know, career highs in homers, RBI, OPS plus. He even had a career high in walks that year with an even 100 walks as well. And of course, y'all know him for getting the walk-off hit off of Mariano Rivera. A little blooper over best defensive shortstop of all time, Derek Jeter, to win the 2001 World Series for the Diamondbacks off of Mariano Rivera. Just over the head of Derek Jeter. Just beautiful right there. Now, 2001... You know, a lot of people are mentioning his BABIP here. His BABIP that year was was, was kind of good. 297 on the BABIP. Not quite as good as his 1999 season or his 93 seasons with Houston, where it's like 340 or 325. But his home run percentage that year, 7.8%. That's pretty darn good, if you ask me. So there you go. Luis Gonzalez from the 2001 Arizona Diamondbacks is in. Perfect team. 24. All righty. We got a couple more cards before we get into some mission rewards today. A couple more cards before we get into some mission rewards today. And the next two cards, they're both perfect cards. So here we go. We start off, we go back to those 1980s Milwaukee Brewers teams. And we bring to you from the 1989 Milwaukee Brewers, it is shortstop and center fielder Robin Yount. 84 BABIP, 84 power, 91 avoid K, 105 contact, 114 gap, and 80 on the eye. A little bit better against lefties than he is against righties in several categories. 90 BABIP, 92 power, 
86 avoid K, 111 contact, 120 gap, and 68 on the eye. Against righties, 82 BABIP, 81 power, 93 avoid K. So you're getting a little bit more avoid K against righties here. 103 contact, 113 gap, and 83 on the eye. Whoo, Nelly. Whoo, Nelly. 69 speed, 88 stealing, 78 base running with 62 sack bunt, 67 bunt for hit. But let's take a look at those defensive stats right there. Whoo, boy. 94 range, 87 error, 98 arm, and 95 turn double play on the infield. Pretty darn good shortstop right here, folks. And he's actually pretty decent in center field as well. 86 range, 105 error, and 82 arm. So he can play both shortstop and center field full, fully trained. Fully trained which is a pretty darn good uh, incentive right there. 1989 season for Robin Yount, a darn good one for the Brewers shortstop. He hit 318, 384, 511 with 21 homers, 103 RBI, and 152 OPS+. Plus. He was the 1989 American League MVP, finished, had a silver slugger, and this is actually his fourth year as a primary center fielder for the Milwaukee Brewers. And he also became the third player with that MVP award to win MVPs at two different positions. Now, against lefties, he had 981 OPS against lefties compared to an 864 OPS against righties. That's pretty darn cool right there. So there you go. Robin Yount from the 1989 Milwaukee Brewers is in. Perfect team 24. All righty, folks. Final packable card of the day here in Topps Dream Bracket 3 collection. Well, third Topps Dream Bracket collection. We go... To 2009 for this one. You know, we're staying in the 2000s a little... We're going back to the 2000s a little bit. And we go to the middle of the country. We go to the AL Central for this one. And we bring to you 100 overall right-handed pitcher from the Kansas City Royals. It is Zach... Granky, Zach Granky, 107 stuff, 109 movement, 105 homer rating, 79 pitcher BABIP, and 104 control. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a little bit of reverse splits. Well, maybe a little bit of reverse splits, but very, very close to even splits right here. Against lefties, 107 stuff, 116 movement, 112 homer rating, 79 pitcher BABIP, and 100 control. Against righties, also 107 stuff, 103 movement, 99 homer rating, 80 pitcher BABIP, and 108 control. Fastball, slider, curveball, changeup, and circle change combo on this guy. 89 stamina, 87 on the whole runners. That's, that's the significant one right there. 2009 season for Zach Granke. Probably one of the best, if not the best season of his career for a very, very mediocre Kansas City Royals team that finished fourth with a 65 and 97 record. This season was wasted on the Royals, my man. Oh my goodness. But he won the AL Cy Young that year in 2009 with a 16-8 record, a 2.16 ERA, 9.5 strikeouts per nine, two walks per nine, and a 2.05 ERA+. Plus. Whoo! Whoo! He was an all-star that year along with that AL Cy Young award, finished 17th. In AL MVP voting as well. Oh, so he could have finished a little higher given how bad the Royals were. He led MLB in ERA with the 216. Finished 
he led MLB in fielding independent pitching with a 2.33 FIP. Led in ERA plus as well. Led the American League in homers per nine as well at 0.4. He did give up, though, a BABIP of 307. So that's why that's a little bit on the... Uh, on the middling side a little bit. Uh, however, um, one big stretch he had during the during the first part of the season, first 24 innings of the season for Zach Greinke, he did not allow a single run. That's not bad. It's not bad. Plus, Greinke can hit a little bit as well. 45 contact, 31 power, 30 eye, and a 29 on the sack bunt for Mr. Granke. So there you go. Zach Granke from the 2009 Kansas City Royals is in. Perfect team 24. So that is the last of the packable cards that we have for you. We also have a few mission rewards for you today. So we got a few tops related missions that are going to be coming out today. A couple of them are something we're kind of trying out as kind of another way to get some tops dream bracket cards in your collections. So the first mission reward we're going to have is for a kind of a player based collection. And that reward for a Eric, uh, for this card right here, it's going to be for the Topps Eric Davis collection. 75 overall, Eric Davis from the 1990 Cincinnati Reds. 64 Babbitt, 86 power, 45 avoid K, 72 contact, 77 gap power, and 87 on the eye. Versus lefties, 66 Babbitt, 90 power, 46 avoid K, 76 contact, 89 gap power, and 90 on the eye. Kind of decent against righties as well. 63 Babbitt, 85 power, 45 avoid K, 71 contact, 74 gap, and 86 on the eye. He can play left field, center field, and right field. 82 range, 88 error, and 86 on the outfield arm. 89 speed, 92 stealing, and 84 base running as well. Not bad at all. So Eric Davis, a mission reward for kind of a collection of, you know, cards based on Eric Davis, his career. Maybe a few tops cards here and there, potentially. 260, 347, 486 on slash line in the 1990 season. 24 homers, 86 RBI, and a 123 OPS plus. Finished 12th in the National League MVP vote that year. This was the fifth of five straight seasons where he had 20 or more homers. And during this season, he homered off of Oakland's Dave Stewart in his first World Series at bat, helping the Cincinnati Reds to sweep the Oakland A's that year. Eric Davis, always a fascinating player that was really, really hampered by injuries throughout his, throughout the, uh, that was peak of the, after the peak of his career, he just was never the same after the 1990 season, you know, due to injuries and stuff. Because he only played like, what? One, two, three more seasons where he had more than 100 games. Which, you know, kind of kind of sad to think about, in all honesty there. So there you go. Eric Davis, 75 overall, the collection reward for a Topps Eric Davis collection. So we have another player-based collection mission that will be rewarding a card for y'all today. And this car, in this mission, is going to be based around one Mr. Mike Trout. 89 overall, Mike Trout is going to be the collection reward for this mission. 80 Babip, 81 power, 62 avoid K from his 2013 season right here. 2013 Mike Trout from the LA Angels. 80 Babbitt, 81 power, 62 avoid K, 91 contact, 80 gap power, and 101 I. A little bit better against righties than he is against lefties. 81 Babbitt, 84 power, 62 avoid K, 92 contact, 78 gap, and 100 
on the eye. A little bit decent against lefties as well. 79 BABIP, 74 power, 59 avoid K, 86 contact, 85 gap, and 104 I. Speed stealing and base running, pretty good. 81 speed, 85 stealing, 99 on the base running. In the outfield, he can play both left field and center field as a high gold card. 80 range, 97 error, and 61 arm. Now, this guy can't bunt, unfortunately. Five sack bunt and 23 on the bunt for hit. Now, during the 2013 season for Mike Trout, he finished second in American League MVP, which, you know, was deserving for Miguel Cabrera, who won the AL MVP. I will take zero questions about that. 323, 432, 557 on the slash line with 27 homers, 97 RBI, and a 179 OPS+. Plus. Finished second in AL MVP to Miguel Cabrera, who was an all-star. He was a silver slugger as well. Led the American League in walks and runs scored during that year. 8.9 wins above replacement and 10.1 offensive wins above replacement. Led MLB in those categories. However, his defensive war was actually the lowest in his career at negative 1.2. Man, oh man. So there you go. Mike Trout from the Angels, you know, he is the best. He, he For a time, he is, was the best player in baseball. Honestly, you can make a case that he still is. But, you know, that 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 title kind of kind of being challenged a little bit by, you know, Shohei Otani, Aaron Judge, those kind of players right there. But still, Mike Trout, still a very, very, very solid. So there you go. Mike Trout from the 2013 LA Angels is in. Perfect team, 24. And so, Tiny, there is no other choice. Yeah, you're right. You're right. All right. So, we will also have some missions for Tops 2 and Tops 3 collections that are going to get you some packs. So, that's another thing to look forward to. We're going to have we're going to have collections for Tops 2. We're going to have a collection for Tops 3 today as well in the missions. However, there is going to be a tops one plus two plus three collection. So if you col if you complete the tops one collection, the tops two collection, and the tops three collection, you will be receiving this next card as a reward. Ladies and gentlemen, your complete tops one, two, and three mission reward is. 100 overall right-handed pitcher Max Scherzer from the 2018 Washington Nationals. Now, there's going to be more tops cards. There's going to be more tops cards throughout the cycle. This is just, think of it as kind of like a midway point a little bit. 117 stuff, 103 movement, 95 homer rating, 92 pitcher Babbitt, 103 control. Against righties, he's got 118 stuff, 103 movement, 95 homers, and 94 Babbitt, and 106 control. Against lefties, still pretty darn good. 114 stuff, 104 movement, 96 homer rating, 90 pitcher Babbitt, and 99 control. 102 stamina, 72 on the hold runners. Fastball, slider, curveball, changeup, and cutter combo. All but the fastball rated at above a 90. That is insane. And of course, Max Scherzer, you know, his time with the Nationals was insane. I particularly am fond of his time with the Tigers. That's just me. But the 2018 season for Max Scherzer, a dominant one. 18 and 7 with a 2.53 ERA, 12.2 strikeouts per nine, 2.1 walks per nine, and a 168 ERA plus. Finished second in NL Cy Young voting, was an All Star that year, and tenth in 
MVP voting, led Major League Baseball in strikeouts. He had exactly 300 strikeouts during the 2018 regular season, led MLB in complete games with two of them. He had a shutout as well and 220 and two-thirds innings pitched, which can extrapolate to about, oh, 660 some odd batters that he got out so that's pretty good and about and uh 300 of them so 300 divided by let's say 660 about 45 percent strikeout rate ish that's not bad that's not bad and this was also scherzer's seventh consecutive season of 200 or more strikeouts so Max Scherzer, dominant pitcher. He's going to be a dominant pitcher for your team as well. 100 overall Max Scherzer from the Nationals as a mission reward for tops 1, 2, 3 complete in Perfect Team 24. So there you go. Your tops dream bracket collection number 3. Nolan Ryan, Joey Votto, Harold Baines, Paul Molitor, Roy Oswalt, Josh Donaldson, Luis Gonzalez, Robin Yount, Zach Granke, Eric Davis, Mike Trout, and of course, Max Scherzer, with Davis, Trout, and Scherzer being Mission Rewards. All right, folks, some fun cards. Very, very fun cards here today, folks. This has been a great time, y'all. Before we move on... Before we sign off for the day, take a, let's congratulate some of our weekly leaderboard champions. Hang on just a second. Ah, I had a little bit of stuff in the back of my throat there. There we go. So let's talk about weekly leaderboard champions from last week. Week three of our PTCS3 period from June 19th through June 25th. The Daily Iron Champion this year, Kutcha 11 in the OK Oaks with 123 points. Daily bronze winner is Bailey and the Cleveland Locomotives with 114 points last week. Daily silver last week was won by Go Cubs Go 16 and the Webster Groves Supercells. 133 points, a two-week streak for him. Daily gold was won by Dan Johns in the generic size Perfect point package with 108 points. And ladies and gentlemen, for the first time this season, we have a daily, a new daily diamond leaderboard champ after 11 straight weeks at the top. Jeff LTN has been dethroned. Ladies and gentlemen, Laertes was your daily diamond champion this past week with the New Orleans Crescent at 133 points. Man, oh man, oh man. Congratulations to Jeff LTN, though, on an 11-week streak at the top of the weekly leaderboard for daily diamond. Long live the new diamond king, Laertes, and the New Orleans Crescent. Daily Open was won by Red Eclipse and the Palatine Plutos last week on the leaderboard with 166 points. Absolutely outstanding. Daily Wild Card, though, Jeff LTN, he couldn't be left off this leaderboard. He won the Daily Wild Card leaderboard last week with 128 points. Weekly Tournaments, Scabro number one and McNoosh's Mutant Ninja Moles finished in first place in the leaderboard last week with 128 points. Perfect Draft Daily last week's champion was Punk 42 AE and the Reykjavik Phoenix with 129 points. And the Perfect Draft Weekly leaderboard was led by Dob and the Sacramental Cheese TBD with 66 points. Congratulations to all of our weekly leaderboard champs from last week. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in to today's stream. Top stream bracket set number three. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you tomorrow for a brand new episode of the Perfect Team Friday Showdown. 
So be be prepared for the return of the showdown after a couple week absence. Actually, more like a few weeks absence because huh, I haven't done it in quite a while. Hopefully, you know, my team will actually be good this week. Who knows? Who knows? Well, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great rest of the day, everybody. This has been Rob Tomlinson, DishNet34, signing out. Have a fantastic day, everybody.